Their notes 4.1. Uh, we have talked about linear, quadratic, and different polynomial functions. Uh, today we're, we're going to start into rational functions. Okay, so a rational function is a function that can be defined by some polynomial divided by another polynomial. Okay, so that's just that simple. Um, where, you know, this can't be a zero here because you can't divide by zero. That's a rational function. So some examples might be like 1 over x. Uh, 1 over x squared, um, x plus 1 over 2x squared plus x minus 1. Uh, it's just one polynomial divided by another. Okay, uh, And it can get more complicated than that too, but those are just basic examples. Okay, So first one we're going to talk about is the reciprocal function, which, which is just 1 over x. So let's say um, I take some random numbers here, um, like 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay? And I graph these, okay? So this is my x, this is my f of x, my y. So if I put a 1 in here, 1 divided by x of 1 is 1. Put a 2 in there, 1 divided by 2, f of x would equal 1 half, 1 third, you know, plug a 4 in there, 1 fourth, plug a 5 in there, 1 fifth, right? So at 1, it's at 1, at 2, it's at 1 half, 3, it's at one third, one fourth, etc. Okay, now if I keep going here, is this ever going to get to zero? So if I have a hundred out here, um, I'd have one over a hundred, right? One hundredth. Um, if I keep going, a million would be one millionth. Is this ever going to get to zero? Okay, is it ever going to? Nope, it's not going to get to zero, you get, right? It's never going to get to zero. Um, I, and x can't be zero, right? Zero, okay, if I put a zero in there, one divided by zero is undefined. Okay, so I know at zero it's undefined. Okay, um, what if I put a one half in there? So if I put this like one half, what's one divided by one half? Two. So half would be up here at two. Uh, what about one fourth? One divided by one fourth would be four. Okay, so our graph looks like this. I know you've talked about this a little bit in algebra two. Okay. And it'd be the same thing with the negatives, okay? With negative numbers, it would look something like this. And that's what the this reciprocal function of one over x looks like, okay? We have something called asymptotes, okay? If I, as I said here, if, as I keep going and I keep going getting bigger and bigger x's, this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, but it'll never actually be zero, okay? Never actually be zero. Same thing over here. If I keep going more negative and more negative and more negative, it's going to get smaller, like negative 0.1, negative 0 0.0001, okay, etc. But it'll never actually teach, touch to zero or go across zero. And the same thing here. We had said it gets to be, um, like if I plug in one half, one fourth, right? It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But at zero, it's undefined. Okay, so we, we have these imaginary asymptotes, these imaginary lines here, where the graph keeps getting closer and closer, but never actually touches those lines, okay? So our vertical asymptote here is this line right here, and that's at the line x equals zero. And our horizontal asymptote, horizontal goes this way, uh, is at the line y equals zero, okay? Um, we, let's talk about domain and range then as well, okay? Our domain, um, would be, okay, so all these numbers will work, all these numbers will work, but we said there was no value here at x equals zero. So if you put it in interval notation, it goes from negative infinity all the way to zero, and then from zero to infinity. Okay, or another way you could write it would be all real numbers but x cannot equal zero. So every number works except for zero. Okay, the range. This graph's going to keep going down, down, down. This graph's going to keep going up, up, up. But I don't have value here at zero, right? So the range is also from negative infinity to zero, and from zero to infinity, or is it continuous? Okay, nope. Okay, it's continuous here, and it's continuous there, but right here, I have to take my pencil off and jump up there, so it's a discontinuous. 
to us. And is it odd or even? Okay, if you remember, if it was, if it was even, it was reflected across your y-axis, okay? And if it's odd, it's reflected across the origin. Okay, so this is an odd function, okay? Now, the same thing goes for when you're graphing things. So if you remember, if I had y equals x squared, you know, that was a parabola, right? With the vertex here at zero, zero. If I did x squared plus two, remember it just shifted it up two units, right? Same sort of idea with this stuff. So we're looking at, looking at these, kind of drawing these asymptotes and then drawing our, sketching our graph in there, okay? So if I have plus three at the end, it basically just shifts it up three, okay? So my my asymptotes, there's my horizontal, and my vertical didn't move anywhere right and left. So my graph would look like this. Okay? The minus four at the end shifts it down four. So my horizontal is here, my vertical didn't move anywhere right and left. So I know my graph looks something like this. Okay. Now, this sort of like if I had, if it was x plus 1 squared, okay, if you remember, that shifts it to the left one. Okay, so if you remember that, same thing here. Okay, this will shift our thing left one, so we have an asymptote here. It didn't move anywhere up and down, though. So our graph would look like this. And then here, it would move positive two. So my asymptote would be here and here. And the graph would look like this. Remember the asymptotes are not really part of the graph, they're just guides for where our graph goes. Okay? So if I come down here with this one, our asymptotes move down two, left three. So I know my asymptotes are here and here. And this, that gives me a guide for where my graph is. Okay. Now, if you also remember, okay, so this one doesn't go anywhere right or left. Okay, the only difference here is that it's a negative. So we still have our asymptotes here on the axes. Now, if you remember, if it was a negative out front, it reflects it across the axes, right? Okay. So instead of being here and here, we know it's going to be here and here instead. Okay, so let's see what this one does. This one shifts up three, and it shifts positive two. So I know my axes are going to be here and here. And then the negative, instead of being first and third quadrants, it's going to be in the second and fourth quadrant. So that's the graphs. Now with all of these, we have to be able to pick out where are our vertical asymptotes, our horizontal asymptotes, what's our domain, what's our range, okay? So the vertical asymptotes, okay, the vertical asymptote is here still at x equals zero. The horizontal asymptote, okay, horizontal one here is up here at y equals three. And our domain is always gonna be all real numbers, but x cannot equal that asymptote and our range is every single number except the y can equal that asymptote. Okay, so I'm just gonna skip to another one here. Let's go to this last one. Okay, so the vertical asymptote. Okay, our vertical asymptote is right here, x equals two. The horizontal asymptote is right here at y equals three. Our domain, okay, so this keeps going and this keeps going, 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 right? So all these numbers, all these x's work except right here at two. So all row numbers, but x cannot equal two. If you prefer the other, um, you know, it goes from negative infinity to two and from two to infinity, okay? So either way is fine how you write it. And your range. Okay, so this keeps going down, 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 so all these y's are included. This keeps going up, 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 so all those y's are included, but not at three. So 
all real numbers, but y cannot equal 3 here. Okay? Now, what if it's not in that form? Okay, so like here, I don't have it in that form. So what I have to do here is I have to divide it. Okay? So if I divide this, use my long division from last chapter, how many times will x go, in, x go into x? One time. So remember, 1 times x plus 1 gives me x plus 1. And I'm going to draw the line and change the signs to subtract. And I get a remainder of 1. OK, so there's my division, right? So another way to write this is 1 over x plus 1 plus 1. So there's my function. So now I know my vert, it goes up 1. And I know it goes negative 1. Okay, and it's positive, so it's going to be here and here. So we can use that long division to find that sometimes. Okay. Okay, the other function we're going to look at today is, is 1 over x squared. Okay, if we think about some numbers here again. Uh, let's take 1, 2, 3, 4, okay? So if I plug it in here, 1 squared is 1, 1 over 1 is 1. 2 squared, 2 squared is 4, be 1 fourth. 3 squared is 9, be 1 ninth. 4 squared is 16, and be 1 over 16, okay? And what's going to happen with if this keeps going, 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 out, out here to 100 or a million, is it ever going to reach 0? Okay, so 100 squared, right? Take 100 squared, it'd be 1 over that number, okay? 99, okay, a million, etc. So this, once again, continues. And also, if I do 1 half, too. 1 half squared would be 1 fourth. 1 divided by 1 fourth would be 4. So once again, it has this idea here. Okay. Now, let's go to negatives, though. Negative 1, negative 2. So I put a negative 1 in here. What's negative 1 squared? 1, okay. 1 over 1 is 1. So even at negative 1, it's up here at 1. Negative 2 squared is 4, be 1 fourth, so 1 fourth. So what that negative part gets rid of the that. Um, so like here, it'd still be negative, right? So we'd, we'd be down in the negative quadrant. But the positive, the squared, gets rid of that negative um, when you square it. Okay, so that's a graph of the y, 1 over x squared. So our vertical asymptote here is at x equals 0 still. Our horizontal asymptote, we still have it right here at y equals 0. Okay, our domain, okay, our domain are their x numbers, so this will keep going, 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 and this will keep going, 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 but I don't have anything here at 0. So it's all row numbers, but x cannot equal 0. Okay, and the range, okay, so I don't have any values down here, right? But I do, this will keep going forever and ever and ever. But, so I, I know my y's have to be greater than zero. And it won't equal zero, because this will never equal zero, right? It'll never never touch the zero line. Is it continuous? No, nope, right? Come here. I know it doesn't equal zero, so I have to jump over and go back down. Okay, odd or even? Uh, remember odd, we had talked about up here, is reflected over the origin. Remember even was reflected across the y-axis. This is an even function. Okay, and the same thing here when we're graphing these. So um, it's basically one over x squared, right? Okay, so if it's minus one there, it moves it to the over here one. So there's my what my graph will look like. Okay, one over x squared plus two, so the plus two shifts it up two. So my graph was there and there. Okay, minus 1 shifts it down 1, plus 2 shifts it negative 2, and it's the x squared one, so it's here and here. Okay, and the last one here, um, it moves up 2. And the 3 shifts at negative 3.
Okay, and now the negative, remember the negative flexes it over the x-axis here, so instead of being here and here, it's going to be right here and right here. Okay, so with each of these, think about where your vertical asymptote is, where's my horizontal asymptote, and what is the demand in the range. Okay, so let's do that real quick here with this one. So our vertical asymptote would be right here at x equals negative 3. Our horizontal asymptote is right here at y equals 2. Our domain, okay, x's continue out here, x's continue out here, but not here. So x cannot equal 3 or negative 3. And our range, okay, so I have y's down here. It stops right here at 2, and I don't have any up there, so it has to be less than 2. Okay, so we're just looking at the basic graphs today. Um, 4.2 will get a little bit more complicated, so get ready for that.